Good evening, everyone. How are you guys doing? Let me just... All right. So let me just check that my audio is working fine. I believe that it is. Let me. All right, guys, if you're in the live stream, just let me know that the audio sounds okay. Okay, so uh, last week we finished the, on Thursday we finished the um, Principles of Animation through Cinema 4D. I'm going to go through the projects that have been submitted today in class and then we're going to move on to our next project which is animating three coherent scenes together inside of After Effects. Um, and we're going to be using voiceover and some audio this time, so it's some exciting stuff. I do, though, want to mention that you guys did awesome on the uh, on the the principles of animation and After Effects. You, I went through those. Hey, Sarah. Awesome to see you today. I went through those um, projects over the weekend and. I was very impressed on all of the work that you guys did and and it looked really good and I went ahead and I put notes in next to I graded everything right so if you didn't turn something in, I just put a zero in if you turn it in before Friday you'll get a grade on it right um, but in fact I'll probably extend that one if you guys get in in by the 10th of March then you guys I'll give you guys credit for it right but uh, overall, really good job. I left some notes in there next to the assignments. If you have trouble seeing like the submission comments or anything, just notify me and I'll manually get those to you. I know I put it in an announcement, but I just wanted to reiterate that to you guys today. And so let's kind of just get into that. I already have the file prepared with um, everyone who submitted the principles of animation in Cinema 40. And so I'm just going to give you guys some feedback on these right now. So this one is Eric. Let me just play here. Cool texturing on that stuff. Interesting. So this is a uh, looks like a yarn, like a spool of thread. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so the bounce looks generally good. There's the little part right there, that little section, where it's almost the easing. I would work on the easing just slightly because it it pops up a little too quick there. So maybe if you have the two keyframes to add that exaggeration, right, spread them out maybe a little bit more on the timeline so it takes a little bit longer to just fling that bounce up. And I'm just talking like a couple sec or a couple frames, if that. Uh, but and just kind of smooth that motion out because right now it almost you can tell it's not like a hitch in the animation but it kind of almost reads like that there is also just and this happens sometimes there is a blank frame just meaning that your your compositions just weren't quite lined up they're off by just one frame so just go in there and and line them up again let's go to your impact scene first of all the textures in this look really nice very luxurious looking textures those look good this so you flip the balls around so the back one is the light one I would almost have that one moving a little faster to be honest like the back the light ball that it gets like nailed and goes flying a little bit faster if you can just extend the keyframes I would do that pull them out the the weight let me 
It's a really good bounce off that heavy ball. Yeah, I like it. And then final one is weight. Where'd that, where? Okay, so the ping pong ball starts here and just bounces off. Nice, let me, so if you guys, just so you know, inside of, I think there's like an in and out point here inside of After Effects, let me see. Set an out point. So in and out points are, and there's, see, there's a blank frame there as well. So you just got to line those up. Let me see if this will work. In and out points essentially are the points on the timeline that you want to play in between. So if you don't want to play the entire video, you just set an in point or an out point. And those are these little sections, these little things right here, these little brackets. Uh, so you'll just drag your timeline to where you want to set that and you'll click on there. Uh, so like if I only wanted to play from here to like here, I would set the out point and it would only play this section, right? But if I want to, if I'm like, oh no, that's too short, I want the rest of it, you'll just move the playhead down and you'll hit that again and it just kind of fills it back. But that's just for, uh, mostly for like video playback and stuff. I want to see if it repeats. This is neat, Eric. The only thing is it's slightly confusing having... Well, not confusing. Nothing on this is confusing, but visually needs to be slightly organized. I would almost put this spool of thread because it's so vibrant and so long. I would put it behind the text because you didn't animate the X or the Z properties on that. So if you just want to push it right behind the text, that would be that would make it easier to see the light ball because I almost missed that entirely in the first first couple views and it's it's a little bit hard for me to just watch the animation of like the ping pong ball I would slow that down slightly I know it's supposed to be a fast bounce but it, it kind of jerks in that section so I would either check your curves or I would slow just the entirety of it down so speed add some more space in there. Other than that, this ball looks pretty good. Maybe mess around with the easing on the curves there. And then the heavy ball, the heavy ball doesn't look bad. Let me play that again. Yeah, nice. You could even have it continue to roll slowly after that, right? So it doesn't, the rolling doesn't come to a stop really quick. Like have the rolling just kind of continue. And then you could change that position forward. So you could in order to have that rot, if you s offset the keyframes of the Y position with the movement of the X position, like it doesn't really start moving forward until the ball's kind of on the s last bounce. And then you add that X keyframe and then keyframe it out along with the roll, like match up the roll and the X keyframes. And you'll have like a longer roll on there, like it's slowly rolling. Just make sure that rotation is not really fast, right? You want it kind of a slower rotation because it is a it is a heavy ball. But other than that, really good start on this. I'm um, super into your play with textures. There is no, um, there's no shadow on your lights. They're not casting a shadow. If there were a shadow, when the when the die is going up, right, or whatever that is that I drew, it would cast kind of a red light and the shadow on the text, but I'm not actually seeing that when I play it. Let me zoom in here. Yeah, so you would see that. So you got to add shadows on your light, right? And so when you click on the light in Cinema 4D, it's under... There should be a shadow tab in your in the panel down at the bottom right. And in there you just select soft shadow maps. And that should just be fine. And just do it for both of the lights. Other than that, awesome, awesome start there. All right, and we have Asia. Let's go back here. First thing I notice, Asia, is we wanna add a floor on here, right? And some lights in here as well. 
So you're gonna wanna do that at some point. Ooh, that ball goes so fast. In fact, it does not go anywhere, it just disappears. So I'm gonna need you to animate the ball on, but the swing, the swing's nice and it settles down. I would even add an extra sway to that swing on the fat on the like lighter hammer impact so that it doesn't kind of abruptly stop right there I would add about two more settling swings in there and then let's look at that heavy heavy one in the back I would almost because it almost looks like it does barely hits this so I would in order to kind of give you the illusion that it's hitting a real heavy object. You want to just move this just slightly further out. Like you want to add a little bit more to the position because right now it looks, it's such a subtle movement forward that it looks like it almost doesn't hit it. And then you, this is what's not selling it, is you have to have a real heavy bounce off of that ball. I would rewatch that section of the lesson that we did and you'll see how the the curve should look like inside the F curve of that specific rotation of the hammer because it should initially be a bounce when it hits that heavy ball. It bounces off that heavy ball and then goes into the swing to settle. And then just I would move this, still move this ball just slightly forward more. Oh, and then uh, same here, floor. Or I'm sorry, I said that on that one already. The squash looks good you need to turn on there's no lights in your scene first of all so you need to add lights in there and then I would take this gap in between here and maybe tighten it up a little bit by you have to essentially turn these each into their own separate objects these letters and then you'll manually move them closer or further apart from each other so when you're on the text layer inside of your object panel, you're going to hit C and it's going to separate all of those out, those letters separate, like pulls them apart, right? And then sticks them into a null group or folder, go into there and then just nudge things over as needed so you can tighten that space up. Because right now the kerning of whatever text you're using between the U and A looks, there's too much in there. And so then add the lights, add the shadows to the lights, right? are act, essentially turning the shadows on within the light layers. But I would rewatch this section as well. As far as the motion of the die goes, you need to add more squash and stretch to this. There's not that much exaggerated squashing and stretching happening. So I would go through this one and rewatch that again. And then we're just with, missing the... Um, which one, the weight scene. So, it, I mean, obviously this is a work in progress, right? Like I can tell that you, you've you just turned in what you have done so far, which is totally fine um, because I've seen your work before and your work usually isn't unfinished like that. But yeah, Eric, hey, how are you doing today? Let me know if you have any more questions on that, what I was going through. But yeah, anyways, back to uh, Asia, your work. Once you get the rest of that turned in, go ahead and, and submit it and then make those changes that I'm talking about now. And that way you, you should be good to go. And then you'll have minimal changes moving forward as far as uh, doing the weight scene, right? That, that'll that be the only one I give you feedback on. But good start on this. And then we have Brian. All right. Good start. Yeah, awesome job on this, putting them together. I like the the slow, the fade-in is like a good timing on the fade-in here, Brian. In general, on all the motion of the videos, I would speed them up or just add additional motion into there, right? Add additional bounces by copying, pasting, or repeating them like we've learned, just so that you can have three bounces in it and... It's not taking so long because right now it takes way too long to fall to the ground. The squashing and stretching looks good. 
you just need to tighten up that the uh, position keyframe so it moves faster. I wouldn't. I see what you're getting at with the slow fading in of the scene, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that because you don't want to focus in on it scaling up. You want to really just focus on the motion of the die. And so that's why we didn't do any like, camera movement or anything there. The other thing I'm noticing is you do have the camera or you do have shadows, it looks like, on your lights. Um, I think you, I don't know if you only have one light in there. Um, you know what it is? You might be using a plane for your backdrop. Instead of using a curved backdrop, which doesn't give um, the effect of fall off, essentially. So, like, if you look at the corner of your room when it's lit up, the closer it gets to the corner, the more the light falls off into that area, right? The corners of rooms are the darkest part of the room. And so, as that gets forward, you see that, that shadow darkening and darkening and darkening where the two walls meet. Same thing is it's kind of the same concept of where you get like a vignette around the screen when you add that when you add the shape of the backdrop in the way the light bounces off of it gives it a little bit of fall off towards the edges of the screen and creates kind of its own little vignette and so I would see that you're using an actual curved backdrop and not a plane on that unless you're gonna do I mean I won't dock you points for it, but this is just to help you make a more visually appealing scene, I guess. And then the only other thing I would do is drop this, uh, the height of this down, or no, maybe you're not doing that because I see the cue there. That's the reason I kept it up. Or what you could do is change the angle of your camera to just kind of give the illusion that it's sitting on the ground. So more up, essentially like up this way. Bring the camera up and over in there so it's looking down at the die from an above angle instead of more straightforward like it is and you should be good on there let's go to your impact scene nice look on like all like the the balls there look good let me see speed looks nice it almost looks like you have a little bounce in that ball like that the speed of the first ball is great speed of the second ball is good the motions there, the rotations there. You did a good job on that one. Yeah, that looks nice. The hammer rotations are good. They don't, um, when this one, when the one in the back hits the heavy ball, it bounces off. Perfect timing on that. That is really nice. That looks great. Nice follow through swing. Uh, the only, I guess the only, Thing I would say is no more don't push the camera in right don't dolly in on the camera and then you're gonna want to move the text over this way so it's more centered in your screen or just essentially you can increase the size of the increase the size of the text and then just move it down to the floor so it's touching the floor right and that should kind of fill up that space a little bit because I know that the camera and everything in that project was already all set up for you and I don't really want you moving that camera so um yeah you should be able to fill that space by just scaling it and dropping the text down and then let's get to the next scene Yeah, in general, just speeding everything up, right? The the squashing and stretching of the, the cell-shaded tune ball looks good. The, same with the, the pepper. I would even move that in the back, right, so that it's not in the way. The, the ping-pong ball, I just want to see a lot more bounces, just in general, speed this one up. The weight one looks pretty good. I saw a bunch of, like, tiny little bounces there. Uh, but you do want to check out your your curves on that because they kind of, it looks like at some point they're kind of easing into each other when you want those to like meet at a hard angle and bounce off of each other, right? But I do see like the slight roll in here. Overall, like visually, it looks good. There's that cool little roll that you have down there and I don't know if you animated a position change into it. My eye is seeing that. It's rolling forward. 
I don't think that you actually added a position key from, I think it's just the, essentially like a, um, like an illusion of it moving forward with the texture that the ball is and with the rotation continuing, it kind of looks like it moves forward a little bit, but either way, good job on that one. I would just update those, those things I let you know, and you should be good, but other really good, solid start on that. All right, now we have Zoe. I believe Zoe. Yes, Zoe. Perfect. Yeah, Zoe, first of all, um, I'm the color palette throughout this is awesome. Really like it. The pastels are super in right now. Uh, I like the texture. I'm not quite sure which texture that you put on the on the text. This edges are kind of weird. I'm not gonna make you change it, but uh be just cognizant of that in the future because here where you have some of the beveling happen happening it's it's due to the texture and the way the tech the or it's due to the material and the way that material is wrapping around the actual object itself i like it for this i don't think other people will notice it as much if you can find a different one that works a little better try that but as far as the motion goes the hammer swings look really nice. Let me, I'm going to stop this here so I can loop it. Didn't work. There we go. This one just, there's a slight hang that happens right about, it's coming down. There's a slight hang right here for some reason. It has to do with the easing of your curve on that hammer, this one right here, specifically with the light ball. As far as the ball goes, the way it moves off screen, how quickly it does and the rotation of it, great job. The pattern really shows that off, and it shows it spinning. He must have added some interesting rotations because right now it's spinning all over the place. I would only make sure that you're spinning in one direction, which I believe was in the excess access. Don't... Quote me a thousand percent. Let's see. Y, X. It's It has to be the X or the Z axis. If you guys remember. Because I'm not, I don't have it open in front of me right now. But yeah, I would just make sure that it doesn't continue doing that. Like crazy rotations there. As far as the hammer, the heavy hammer. That one looks really nice. It was a really smooth bounce off of the ball the ball moves the appropriate distance it rolls the appropriate amount i wouldn't even touch that one really good job on that let me see let's move forward here right there here we also have a blank keyframe so you're or blank frame so you'll just have to check for those First of all, I want to mention this is a fun texture on the on the text. I'm sure you found that in the like the pattern the same way you added the the pattern to the ball, but that's really cute cuz it it fits the pastel aesthetic to it. The floor's a little light. I'm not sure. I know um a couple other of you guys were having some issues that I was reading about inside of Slack where you were having trouble seeing the full color of the floor. Make sure that it's not something to do with the light. And then if it has nothing to do with the lights, then I would try and add the PNG option, right? Drop in an image onto your own created material versus using a pre-made material in there. Because like I said, sometimes these materials can work really funny with the lighting and 
the rendering system and it just washes things out or it'll be completely black or it has that glittery effect. So materials can be funny. So I would either pick a different material or try that PNG method. I, I believe we spoke about it on Tuesday of last week. So you'll be able to find a reference there. As far as movement goes, I would just speed up the motion of the ping pong ball and add a bunch of them in there or extend the length that it moves forward, right? Because this, it's slightly slow. You're almost there. I'd say you're like 90% there on that high bounce. In fact, I wouldn't change it, to be honest. It looks like just instead of someone throwing it with a force at the ground where it would bounce really fast and high and for a long time, it looks like someone just kind of held it up high and dropped it. So I will accept that. You don't have to change that one. The bouncing one looks really good. Great job on that. The heavy one, get a couple bounces in at the bottom because right now, ooh, Oh, okay, I would just add one more bounce. So it's more prevalent that, or more obvious that it's actually bouncing and not just hitting the ground. Let me, Cause right now it just kinda, that second bounce happens so quickly that it, I can't see it initially until I slow the video down and you don't want, you don't want people to have to do that. So just add in one to two more bounces on that one and continue with that roll on there. But that looks really nice. Good job. Let's see here. We'll look at the last part for you, which is your dice. You guys are really doing well because some these are confusing. 3D gets confusing and nice squishy die. I would add a couple more, just extend the length of it. Um, move either your camera over slightly so that there's the same breathing room on either side of the text, right? So center that a little bit more by either you can move the text over or you can update your camera. And then like, like I was telling um, Brian, you could also move the camera up and above, like looking down at the te text and the dice and giving it kind of a similar angle to the impact scene, right? Other than that, good job on the, the squash and stretch with it. Colors line up really well. Yeah, cool. Good start on that. All right, so we have Kaylee's. Cool, Kaylee, initially um, what I'm seeing here is you just want to move this down, right? So it's more centered in your screen. If you have to slightly just scale the type down a little bit more, that's okay too. Let me play this. Nice and bouncy, but your text is um, scaling in. I wasn't, is, is was that, did either of you, Eric or, or Sarah, did you guys watch the other videos that were linked on the, in Canvas on the module? Did it, did Casey say to like scale in on that one? Because I don't want to dock you guys points if he said to do that, but um, I prefer no motion in the camera movement or no slow scaling in because it just, when you start adding too much onto something, you want someone to super hyper focus on one spot, unless the motion is adding to that, it's taking away from it, right? So I just think it's easier to look at and not be distracted by the scaling. But I also don't want to tell you guys no if that's what you saw in some of the other lessons that were linked because I haven't watched those in a long, long time. So um, if that's the case, somebody write me. Let me know. Send me a Slack. Say, hey, this is what it said to do in there. And then I will be aware of that, right? Other than that, yeah, because the text is actually, the text is, um, that could have been, I appreciate the gumption with that if that is what you did is to like like scaling the text out to add kind of like an additional movement. I understand why you would do that if that's what you did personally. I just would not put it in there just because we want to really focus on that dice. And then I need a couple more bounces of that dice. So let's add just, oh, you got the three in there. No, that looks 
Good job with those three. Maybe speed it up slightly, but I'm not even going to worry about that as much. Most, the, mostly the thing I want you to do is drop that text and then just don't animate anything other than the dice. Good job on the impact. The, uh, that ball goes flying. That is a very light ball, and that's exactly what we wanted. The ball here rolls appropriately the correct distance. Let me check out the hammers. Drop this text down to the floor. There's a little bit of a gap happening there. Yeah, the swings are all a little bit, they're less, how do I say this? In between each swing of the hammer, how you have it is there's a more exaggerated shape to your curve, right? Your curves probably are a little bit taller and kind of look like possibly like this, more pointed, kind of at the top versus something that looks a little bit more fluid and a little bit rounded, right? And that'll get that smooth swinging motion into there because right now it kind of uh, almost, it's a little bit too dramatic and it hurt, it jerks back and forth, right? And we don't want that. Uh, let me see the other hammer. You nailed it on the other hammer. So really look past the, past the section where the hammer bounces off the ball, right? Look at that waveform and then essentially apply that to the to the light hammer swing as well. But really good start on that. Minimal edits needed. The weight one looks good. That's exactly what I was saying as far as uh it does look like a heavier ball. I would say it looks less of a bowling ball and more like a like um you know those plastic balls that you get at Walmart that all like for a while there all the these people were like jumping into the bins and stuff which I don't know why you would do that because there's no quick exit <laughs> right if you want to do something bad or <laughs> I mean I'm not condoning bad behavior but come on now let's let's use our stuff stuff uh I think that OBS went offline for a second there Oh my gosh. <laughs> Am I still in the chat? Am I still live? Let me check. Because my OBS just sent me an error message. No, it still looks like it is there. Sarah, that is funny. I didn't even realize I used a pun, by the way. <laughs> I na you nailed it on the other hammer. But Oh my gosh. I don't sometimes I don't even know how crazy eyes <laughs> that's really funny though um but yeah Kaylee like good job in general on this let me just check the rest of the like the ping pong ball right yeah good job on that one great job on the blobby kind of cell shaded looking one I actually like that you use the lighter kind of stroke effect on there with the because it's more of a teal turquoisey it almost looks like the ball is glowing. Maybe something you would collect in a video game, right? As part of like a, a mission to collect a bunch of stuff. The other thing is there's like some weird scaling happening with the floor or like weird thing happening with the cameras. I would make sure you're not touching that. I think there's another video here. Is this, this was the small one, right? Yeah, good, really good start on this. Just change those things that I was mentioning, and uh, you should be good to go here. Also, yeah, no, the the shadows are on the lights there. Okay, thanks for letting me know, Sarah. So, class, yeah, small glitch in the video. It's not like I'll if if ever I'm live streaming a class and it goes out right, um, either. I will jump right back on. I will leave you guys a message in Slack letting you know what happened, right? Um, like if power went out or something like that. And then if need be, I will record the entire lesson, 
as a video and I will upload it to YouTube and tag you guys in it or like just link the video to you guys somehow like uh, both in Canvas and in and inside of Slack so that you guys don't feel like you missed something. I'll always keep that open line of communication letting you guys know if there is any issues but thanks there Sarah. Team moderate. Yeah, really good start on this, Kaylee. Good job paying attention to some of the to some of the detail there. All right, so we have Nolan. I believe it's Nolan, right? Yeah, Nolan. <laughs> nice. That thing went flying. Awesome chrome texture. I'm not sure what where you found that one, but nice. That one was good. Change the tiling on the floor, Nolan, so that it's not. Um, so large, right? Because it makes the impact thing look really small without increasing the tiling. Also, make sure that you go into, when you click on the material inside of the material panel, under uh, viewport settings, change the the resolution of the image so that we get a higher resolution because right now it's blurred out there. So cool use of um like this really shiny looking, you know, with the chrome. Super shiny chrome, sh shiny copper bronze color, and a shiny gold. And then um, this matte material on, of, on top of the text is a good contrast, right? Not, not everything is super shiny, but the things that need to be are. Good job on that. Let's go ahead and play it out. Really good job on that light... The light impact on the back it hits the ball and then it comes to it like settles really well nice slow down of that continued off like continued going implied that the there was implications that the rotation is continuing off screen after the video is done right that it continued to to slowly come down and settle to the appropriate spot. So good job on that. As far as the the heavy ball, I need a bounce off of that ball, right? Right now it's just hitting it and following through, but we want to bounce on that. The only thing that I will say is adding, here's the problem with the material, and now I'm realizing this, is adding a shiny material like that doesn't give us any ability to see the ball rotating because I can't tell if you have a rotation happening on here because of the super shiny material and that's why we picked a pattern so at least the light one I'll allow or the light ball right the light impact I will allow the shiny material because it moves so quickly uh, in my opinion it's not really going to matter if you add that in there um, specifically with that material because it almost looks like it's just skidding across the floor because it goes so fast. But this one adds some kind of pattern to it. If you can find a way to add the pattern and also have it like a really shiny metal material, that would be cool. Um, but that's kind of what I would add there. As far as the bounce goes, let's watch these. It looks like it's rendering out... With some kind of points like um, wireframing stuff happening here. Let me know if you were having any issues with rendering. Because that's kind of the, that's what I'm noticing there. The other thing I noticed right off the bat is the floor again. Do the same thing like in the impact scene. Increase the tiling. Increase the resolution of it. And you should be good. Um, then the ball right here. You gotta, you have to go... When you create the sphere in the attributes panel at the bottom, you have to make sure that you change it to a hexahedron and then increase the segments of it. Because if you don't do that, that's when you get all these uh, ridges kind of happening where I can count out the sections uh, of the geometry around the ball, right? So you want to increase that by quite a bit, maybe even like 40. If it's already in the hexahedron, great, but just increase that segment to like 40, 45, and you should be all good. Let me see here. Let's watch the motion of the ping pong. 
really nice there. Good job. I would continue, continue on the bounce on that because it wouldn't just stop right now. It would continue bouncing. And then you can add that forward position keyframes onto there, and that'll be great. The heavy bounce one, I would also uh, check the check the curves on that. Add an extra bounce in there to see if you can add a roll into it. And then there is, um, I can show you guys what else you can add. Let me look at the cartoony ball. So the only thing is it looks like you need to change your, uh, within the squash and stretch parameter, we animated the factor and then we animated, I believe the, we updated where the center was and animated the, um, oh gosh, what was it? Let me open the project. Is it that one? It's this one. Of course it shall open off screen. <laughs> Why not? Oh, really no. Ugh. Bummer. So my um I have to renew my license. This this will happen at some point for you guys, not during this semester. The licenses last for a total of six months, so it should actually last throughout the summer. But at a certain point, right, because you guys signed up in like January, let's say January 17th, so around July at some point, it's going to say, hey, your license is expired, you know, you need to go through and pay for it again. And you'll just follow the same instructions if you want to renew it, if you're going to be taking more of these 3D classes. And Casey, if you're taking those classes with him, he will remind you guys how to do that. So, But because of that, I can't open my project. So I am going to just go to my notes real quick. Because I want to tell you the appropriate thing to do. Um, okay. Which one are we on? The weight. All right. It's animating the factor. And then we animated the center, right? We... we we keyframed the center parameter at certain areas. So you want to make sure that you expand that parameter so it exaggerates the shape of the squash and stretch. Um, I would re-watch that section because right now it's creating a bell shape and you definitely don't want that. And then uh, also it it puckers right there, which is something else you don't want. So I would re-watch that section. That was the first part of last Thursday's class. So, or right after I had answered all the participation questions, right? We went through that. And so I would just rewatch that specific part of the video and, and then just follow it kind of step by step and, and you'll get there. And then you also want to add more bounces. The bounces have to continue for the, throughout the remainder of the video, right? You don't want to just stop um, and still have like three or four seconds left on the video. The squash and stretch. I would maybe pick a different. I'll allow the font, but I want you to make it larger and space it out right now. Everything is really condensed, which doesn't really look good. It looks tight. It looks a little claustrophobic. So I would select the type, hit C on the keyboard to separate all of the letters out to their own separate objects, right? And then manually space them by visual, right? You can space them specifically by entering very specific values into the position parameter, but you can also do it visually, right? Because we're looking through a camera at this point um, and the camera skews things because cameras have like a depth of field and stuff. So, and then I would just add, you need another, let's see here. One, two, 
three. Continue through that more. Add a few more frames at the end or add an extra bounce if you can. I mean, there's three bounces, so that's what's required. It's working on the, the bounce looks good. I would work on the squash and stretch section of that. And then was your, you have to add your shadows on to your lights as well. Like I was mentioning in the beginning, but a uh, good start on it. Good, good take on that kind of stuff. I think that you're, you're halfway there. You just have a little bit more work to go and, and it'll look really nice. So good job on that, Nolan. Now we have Janelle's work. Starting off with the impact. Nice. Nice settling time right there. Let's let's watch this first light impact happen. Nice. Settles very that was very smooth settling of that the light hammer impact. Let's watch a ball. Yeah, good job. Very fast. It moved super fast. Uh, and you've got the rotation happening. Good job on that one. I would say nothing to change there. The heavy impact in the back. Let's watch that hammer. Nice bounce off. And, and great job, like, settling into that one as well from the hammer swing, the pendulum swing, right? And then uh, good job on this. I would maybe play around with your color palette a little bit these colors also look a little washed out so if you were having uh, issues with the floor material as well I would either do the the option where you create like essentially a texture you just put a, a picture on it so it projects the image since it's a flat surface and you're not having to wrap it around anything and that way it won't look super bright I don't think or um, a different material or turning down the intensity of those lights. You can also do that. Warming them up a little might warm up the floor a little bit. And then I would just move that text down slightly. But good job on that one. Nice job. Offset that. This one looks great. I see you followed the instructions really well. This ball, really nice bounce there. Let's look at that heavy one, really. Let's see that one. Nice. The ball hangs slightly too long at the top, so you want it to be not such a nice rounded curve. You're going to want that almost to be more of a pointed, sharper looking curve. Still a curve, but just more of a drastic curve because it's heavy, right? So it's going to bounce fast and settle down. But Really good job on that. Really good start on that. Same thing with the floor. I th there must be something happening with the lights that were in the, the um, template. So I'll check that out for you guys. I'm not going to dock any of you for that. I'm just letting you know what, what you'll want to update for, for the revision round. Nice job on the squash and stretch. I would just say maybe scale the text down so that um, your dice looks bigger, right? We want it to kind of look a little more exaggerated. So I would just scale the text down, punch in on the shot, which means just kind of not animating the zoom, but push in the camera a little bit more so that it's a little bit of a tighter view. Um, good job on centering it. It looks really nice. You can tell that it's a uh, backdrop because you have the fall off happening here. And it's almost like you can see the crease right there. Good choice in color, palette. Overall, really good job on this, Janelle. Uh, good start on it. Just a couple edits for you. All right, and then we have Yvette. Let's see Yvette. Yeah, uh, Yvette, first thing I notice on here, uh, just the texture. We want to... Let me silence my phone. I'm going to flip this bad boy around. Um, tile that texture and then increase the pixel density so that it looks clear and not fuzzy or pixelated but nice um I like the use of the copper and then the wood on on the spheres instead of a pattern using wood there which has a pattern in it already right with wood grain looks nice let's watch the movement yeah, really good smooth movement on that pendulum swing of the light ball. 
Let's watch the let's watch the hammer hammer. Really nice there. The ball off screen very quickly. Looks really light. And then let's look at the heavy hammer and then the ball. Nice. You could um sh let that hammer hang back slightly on that swing, right? Because right now it goes boom and it hits and it goes really fast right there between the bounce. So you could either, um, if you go into your curves on your F curve and take that specific keyframe where it's moving back and just bring it up in um, vertical space on the graph, then that will increase the position of it, like the rotation height, and it'll give it more... It, and then I would just um, take the curves and then pull them out, right? So that expand them a little bit. So it's just more of a smoother move into each other and more of a smoother look and less of a like real pointy drastic curve. The ball looks, let's watch the ball. Yeah, the ball looks good. Let it uh, continue. It kind of stops rolling really quick. So I would just uh, let the rolling, I think I would allow the rotation no it stops and stops rotating and moving position at the same time maybe you could increase the rotation just slightly slightly if you want to I'm not going to dock you if you don't and then the weight scene um so same thing like I said in that first scene make sure you change the tiling of the material there and then also to increase the pixel density so again how you do that is you have your materials in the material panel. You're going to click on that. And then down in the attributes panel, there's something that says like viewport or view. And you're going to click on that. And then it has that space that you can increase the, um, essentially the resolution of the image, right? Um, this font, I'm not a fan of. I would suggest... I'm not quite sure this one could have been one that was used in the in the approved fonts. Sometimes there's some weird ones in there. But this kind of just, just detracts from the rest of the overall composition. And so I would just get a nice heavy weighted font, right? Because we don't want the font to be the first thing that we look at. We don't we want really the motion to be the first thing we're looking at, but Let's watch that. Nice squishy movement there on the... Nice. Oh, it's real snappy there. Good job. It just like sucks up like a real quick rubber band. Nice job on that. Good, good job at creating like a nice gradient from here to the black. And then let's look at the ping pong ball. Yeah, nice. Continue that bounce and just move it forward so it bounces off screen. So when you're, when, I know I only did a certain, in my example, I only did a certain amount of bounces and that was because I moved the X position of the ball off screen. So it just implied that the ball continues to bounce off screen. If the ball is going to stay in one place, that's okay, but you need the ball to continue bouncing past when the video is done, right? To imply that the, the bounce is still continuing. Um, and it can still decrease, but you're going to have to add a lot more bounces before a ball like that would actually stop. Imagine taking that ping pong ball and just chucking it across a room and, or in a room that or like a gymnasium, right? With the hardwood floor, it would bounce forever. It would not stop bouncing. So just keep that in mind when you do that and think of this like your gymnasium floor, right? The heavy bounce. Let's look at that one. Pretty good. Not bad. Good start on that. Um, you guys are putting in really good effort into these heavy bounces considering I didn't go over that in class and I said that's specifically one you'll work on by yourself. Um, adjust the curves so that it doesn't really hang at the top. We want it to be a fast bounce. Add some roll and position change into that. And then um, I'll show you guys something else. So I'll, I'll just show you guys right now. You can add camera shake. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. So, here's...
here's a good way for you guys to see how to use those in and out points, right? I only want this section of the video. I don't want the whole thing. So I'm going to move my playhead up here in the preview window, and I'm going to hit the set endpoint, and then I'm going to go to the end of the section of the video, right there, and I'm going to hit set out point, and then I'm going to take this little one right here, and I'm going to drag it down. In fact, I think you can just drag the entire overlay edit. If I just click that, does it do it? No. Maybe it's because I don't have a comp. That might be a good idea. Just add a random comp in there. And then let's go back to that preview up there. And then now click this. And it drops it into your composition at that specific time point. Or that like stretch of time that you want in there instead of adding the entire video. Although it still has the option to have the entire video, right? Because if you look at it, there's all of this space here where it's almost like it's the layers there, but it's invisible, right? And you can extend that if you want to like this. You just grab these, you hover over there and this two-ended arrow shows up and you just click and drag, right? And go back there. And so when the when the ball hits the ground first, second thing I would note, say to you is to make sure the ball is hitting the ground. I bet. But, woo, let's go. One, two. Okay, that's where it hits. Let's add that camera shake in there. So, search for camera shake inside of the um, effects and presets. Let me move my, oh, wrong one. Let me grab my camera. I'm going to move it up he down here right now. There we go. And we want the shake to happen. Um, so you can increase the blur duration. So when something shakes, it's going to blur it out a little bit. Um, and then I don't think so. You can say how long you want that blur to happen. Five frames is is plenty, I think, for this because you want the camera shake to happen quickly. It's not like an earthquake, right? It's like if a bowling ball were to hit the floor and shake a camera really quickly. And then the strength is obviously all the way up, so you can drop that down if you don't want the like the strength of the effect to be so intense. You can drop that position that percentage down and then the shake sensitivity I'm going to assume is how how sensitive how much it shakes itself so if I add that on let me see here if you're ever wondering let's shut that off is this the right one this is a blur camera shake the blur I think you can do it with wiggle instead Remove that one. Let's see here. Let's try adding the Wiggle Rama. So this, we don't need it to change in scale, but we want the No, let's just use the position one. Wiggle position. Because all we want to happen is it to kind of shake the frames a little bit so that it looks like it's um, it's moving the camera, right? And so we want it to happen quickly. So you would keyframe the speed. You would start at zero. And then right when the ball hits. Let me zoom in on the timeline here. So here we're almost broken down. At this point, when we zoom in really far like that, we're down at frames, right? Every frame. So if we're going frame by frame on here, just viewing, once that ball hits the ground right there is where you want that wiggle, wrong, that wiggle of the position to start. So I keyframe that first um, position at zero, right? Because we don't want it to start there. So I'm going to move this to the one frame right before the ball actually hits the ground. And then on this frame, where the ball does hit the ground, is where I'm going to increase that speed. 
to one. And then let's take the scale. No, I don't want to do that. We're not messing with the scale so much. Let's change the anchor point. Let's remove these keyframes and change the anchor point of this first. Right now, I believe the anchor point of the actual transform is up in the corner there, and we don't want that. We want it in the center. And so let's change the anchor point value to 960 over 540, and I believe that centers it. Let me see if I can offset the image. The amount... I don't know. Let me look into this one a little bit more. I'm going to remove that off of there. Remove that off of there. I believe it is it's this one, but... Maybe if I just scale this a little slightly. Not even that much, like 105. That's plenty. And then keyframe at one. Move back a frame, keyframe at zero. So then it's going to go right when the ball hits and then we're going to kind of let it shake the camera for a couple frames and so we'll add let's increase the let's keyframe this again hit you and just add an additional keyframe if you just click there remember it adds a keyframe at the value that you're already set at right so you can either copy and paste or you don't have to and then I'm just going to take this one. Here's the other option. Control C, move your playhead to where you want it to be, and then Control V, right? And so we might want to Control V, Control C, Control V. There we go. Mm, this happens a little fast, and it only moves, it kind of jerks in one direction, which I don't want. Let me see a different way to do this. And, uh, let me mess around with this a little bit more tonight, and then I'll figure that part out. But essentially what you'll add is like a camera shake to it, and that will sell that the ball is a lot heavier than it actually is. But a uh, good start in this event. We'll talk about that a little bit more and add that in there. And then as far as your dice goes, um, the first thing you want to do is... Make sure that these that the wireframe is turned off, right? You want to check the render settings. And if the render settings have geometry only marked, then you want to go into the um back into the the project and in the just when you're hovering over the viewport, all you gotta hit is N and then A. And once you hit those like one right after the other, it'll take away the wireframe and so you can actually see uh, the the actual geometry without any of these lines in it. Um, different text, use a different text here. That Q, we don't want a lowercase Q, we want an uppercase Q. So use a, a font that has all capital letters that look really good together. Um, this is more of like a hand-drawn type. And then... We need to just, you know, I need to see that with the texture. There's already a, a material on the dice, but. All right, and so we need a few more bounces. Like, obviously, this is a work in progress as well, so we need a few more bounces. That initial squashing and stretching looks really good. Just continue it throughout the rest of the bounces. But other than that, great start on this. I look forward to seeing the changes that you make on it. Good job overall. Good job for everyone overall. And then uh, Juliana's. For some reason, I thought I already looked at that one. Did I look at that one? Maybe not. This one looks like the small version. Hmm. 
No, this one I haven't seen yours yet, Juliana. Let's look at this. Let's zoom in here. So the first thing I see is that you're going to want to um, either change. What did I do there? You're going to want to change um, the check your project settings and make sure that it's 1920 by 1080 or if it's um, 720 by whatever that is, then you need to make sure your comp is that size too because right now you've got black bars on the top and on the bottom, which means that it's not filling out the composition properly instead of After Effects. So you're going to want to do that. And then um, I would add, like, right, move this... Either do all capital letters, which would fill the space out right here, or you need to move this text over um, this way so it's centered in the in the composition because the way it is now, everything's really heavy weighted in a particular spot, and there's this kind of um, blank negative space right over here, which is a little bit of an odd just uh, design. From a design standpoint, it's a little bit of an odd spacing. So let's continue. The um, first, they're both fast. So you need to make one of them a heavy impact ball. And then we need a rotation on it. So I would put like a pattern on that more because right now it's just a position change. So this one's a work in progress as well. I can see the, the hammers settle pretty well at the end. I would make sure that the that the curves are smooth so it's not kind of just stopping quickly because the rest of the the rest of them look good or just add in a couple more swings to it right and then the other thing so here's the bounce yeah generally good job on that you need to speed up this the bounces of the the cell shaded ball right add a color into that instead of having it just white but that needs to be sped up quite significantly. The the ping pong ball, let's look at that one. Yeah, you need to speed that one too and then um, work on the heavy ball as well, speeding it up, um, playing around with the curves. You're almost there though on the scene and then I would either make the title all capital, all caps, or move this the title over a little bit so it fills in the space because right now it's not quite centered. If you're looking at like the a angle of the camera is is kind of off slightly, right? It's up and over and back farther so you can see a lot more height within the video. And so you just have to kind of make sure then that the spacing, right, is from here almost like an angle, right? Like you're looking, like if you put a straight line in between the word bounce, you want it to have the same amount of room here as is here. And so just make sure that you're keeping that in mind. And that's for everyone because this is something that I noticed throughout everyone's work. And it happens is um, not centering the type. And so we want to make sure that's centered because slight, if it's slightly off-centered, it's not an intentional thing. And, it, and it's a very awkward thing to look at. So... And then, yeah, we need to work on that. The dice, right? We need three bounces total. The squashes and stretches kind of getting there. I would just rewatch that section of the lesson. And then it looks like you have some kind of shiny material on your floor. I would avoid that um, and stick to the a similar material that I used in the lesson. And then also like a plastic material in here. Um, everything's really kind of pixelated, so I'm not quite sure if this is like a wood texture you have on here or not. Um, but I would avoid a wood texture on here or just a pattern in general because remember the pattern has to wrap around the geometry and when it wraps around the sides, um, it's a whole different ball game. You have to essentially take an object and pull it apart and then put the texture on in appropriate ways because it, it automatically does not do that. So just maybe a plain old plastic kind of texture on the, the type, center it again. Let's get these, um, make sure in your viewport or the render settings that you have geometry only checked and then hit the NA like we were talking about earlier. So uh, some work to do on here, but good start on this. Let's see here. Not quite sure why my window disappeared. So 
put this in. All right. So I had just closed my project panel on accident, so let's just open that one up. Right there, perfect. And then we have bears. Let's zoom out here so we can see the entire thing. Uh, I don't know if you guys are football fans, but these are the best colors in college football because Michigan State is the best team. Um, if you guys don't agree with that, then I'm sorry you fail the class automatically. I'm just kidding. Um, no, good job there. It is slightly off center. Um, this distance right here is longer than this distance right here. So just make sure that they are centered inside of the comp composition, right? Uh, but other than that, great job lining it up vertically. Ooh, interesting. He, he Casey must have had the um, camera movement in there because that's what I'm seeing in multiple of your guys' stuff. So I'm not going to dock you guys for that. If I mention something about camera movement in your video, don't even worry about it. You don't have to change it, okay? Or like a, if, if it was either a camera movement or you guys were scaling in and punching into the composition, you guys can leave it as is because um, there's no way that multiple of you guys did this without it being taught to you. So just scratch if I mentioned anything about that. The first thing I notice is I'm digging the uh, texture that you have on here, the material that you have, like the green look for it. And then I, I understand the bevel is to kind of like add a, um, it's like a stylistic choice, right? I might not do as exaggerated as a bevel, but I can let you, I'll leave it like that. The thing is, is if you do a less exaggerated bevel, you get more of this face in the front of the type and um, it'll just give a, a cooler reflection. So I would check it out that way. Um, but if you don't change that, I'm not going to be upset. Good job on the um, spacing of everything here. I mean, I think it was already that way. This literally looks like a deck. Like... A wooden deck that you would walk out to and have barbecue on um, I'm assuming then that you put an image into that let me know how you did it um, if it is just an image and it can be tiled down or if it's a pattern it can be tiled down tile it down slightly so it's not so big so it doesn't make this uh, the whole composition kind of look small right but with this being said let's look at the motion Really nice smooth swing there um, on the light ball. And then when it hits that light ball, great rotation. It might just be the patterns that's making these things look like they rotate like crazy. So if you don't actually, if you guys, I know that there was one other one where the rotation looked like the ball kind of went all over the place. Um, if you guys didn't animate all of the different uh, rotation properties like the X, Y, and Z, then just leave it as is and let me know it's the pattern, right? Um, I like the stylistic color choices here, but the, the light hammer swing and the, the light ball looks really nice. The heavy one, let's check that one out. Let's go back here. Uh, work on that bounce a little bit because it needs to bounce back a lot further after it hits the ball. But other than that, it swings to a nice steady kind of slop. There's a little bit of, or stop, there's a hitch slightly in the animation. Where are you? Or it just kind of stops a lot quick, like too quick. And so um, I would check your curves on the hammers. And the ball rolls appropriately there. Good job on the scene. Like, really good job, Bear. And I'm... I really like your color choices of stuff. Interesting color palettes um, that I normally don't think of. This just reminds me of like the Wizard of Oz overall. Um, the yellow and the green. It's cool. Uh, let me, or even, I think Green Lantern, he didn't have yellow, but he had all the greens. So yeah, like the, how this text, um, the type here kind of catches the light differently because the bevel's a little bit different on here. This looks cool because the bevel doesn't come to a, um, like a point. 
this looks nice. I'd move the tight back slightly and then you need to tile the the floor here so the floor looks a little bit smaller. Um, if you had an issue with that as well, let me know. Make sure that this is a hexahedron and then just increase the segments there. Other than that, you added the nice, you added the the camera shake in there to sell that heavy the heavy ball hitting. That's what I was talking about, class, is the camera shake. It might just be wiggle rom I added down to it, but I'll look it over up and we'll go over it on Thursday. Um, let's look at your ping pong ball. Nice job on that. Bounces and it goes off screen. Then the the heavy ball looks awesome. Did a great job on that. I have no um no feedback on the heavy balls. You nailed it. And then the rest of the... Yeah, those look nice. Um, real fluid. I would maybe check out where the anchor point is on the pepper one. Uh, the pepper one, again, for any of you guys who did it, is extra credit, right? I'll bump you up 10 extra points on that. But... Um, just make sure that the pepper either fits within that squash and stretch so it, the center isn't, because right now the cap, like it's not like the squash and stretch. If you were to think of it as like a bounding box around the pepper, it is like if I take my phone here, right, and there's the bounding box that's the size of my hand. It's only going covering this side, side of the pepper, and you still have this much of the pepper not being covered or affected by that squash and stretch bounding box, right? But as soon as you start to move that box up or down, it will affect it more. Or if you scale that box up, right, if you change the, the parameters and the values of the, of the squash and stretch, or you can scale down the actual object, and it'll fit inside of that, like, invisible um parameter box better but really good job on the animations of these you're off to a really good start minimal changes this is nice cool good job on that squash and stretch of the dice yeah it looks really nice and fluid and it bounces up i i really don't have any changes on that one um the actually there is one thing um shadows make sure you turn the shadows on on your lights but other than that, really good job. And here we have Nyx. All right, Nick. Same thing I'm noticing with every, everyone else's, right? Tile the material on the floor so that it um, appears smaller. And then go into the material panel, click on that material. Um, in the attributes panel at the bottom right, you will see a box that says, or like a little tag label that says view or viewport. Click on that and just increase the pixel density. Cool material on this ball. Um, this it almost like I would call it an orb at that point. Let me just delete that real quick so I can focus on this. Um, I would center the text, so just move the type over this way slightly. Let's watch that. All right, the the ping pong bounce looks not, looks pretty good. Um, you do have to work on the curves, right? Um, I would go and reference all of the curves for the ping pong ball and then for the cell shaded ball as well inside of the lesson. So I would go reference these, right? In general, the bouncing is too slow, and then the curves are just easing in and out. See how it slowly comes? Your curves are gonna look like this right now, where it moves out of it and it hits the peak and then it goes to there, right? And this is a bounce, so we want it to look like this. Down to the ground, hits the floor and bounces back up. So your cur curves may need to look like this, and right now I think they look like this, right? Like a smooth, smoothly moving out of the first keyframe which would be here, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, and then slowly moving into the la the the following keyframe, and that's not what you want. So I would check all of the key the curves on those, the position of these, especially that um, the heavy ball needs extra bounces, right? 
as far as the squash and stretch of the of the cell shaded ball or the cartoon ball you need to add the center animation point in there which was um we talked about last class when I was doing that because right now you just have the squash and stretch on it but we need to make it look more exaggerated by animating the center point so I would go back and watch that section again um, the floor here, let's pick a different texture for the floor because this, essentially what you have inside of a 3D program is going to be like an, an orb, right? Let me see. That's a square. That is not, that is not it either. Where is it? The circle one. Come on now. Is it four? No. Bet you it's like uh, I don't know what it is. I can't figure it out. Either way, so I'm gonna explain it with my hands then. You have a world, and inside of this world is where all of your stuff goes, right? And if you put a material on your floor or any of your objects that is reflecting the world, then it's gonna show those reflections within that material on your that is on your object right so the reason that they put um a world uh around it right is because in your normal everyday life you go outside and you have the sun you have um bouncing light from the sun and all of that kind of stuff so it just adds um it adds like interest to the lighting of your scene but with that being said you have to be very careful about super shiny materials. So I would update this material here so that it's like a wood floor or something, right? Um, but I like the materials that you have on here. Again, you're going to have a problem with seeing the rotation. So I might, you might want to think about adding, um, I'm sorry, adding a pattern onto these ones. The type looks almost centered. I would just kind of nudge it over this way more. Let's watch a motion. The hammer swing, you're almost there. So the hammer swing settles too quickly. So you need to like let that draw out. Like if you were to pull back um, a pendulum and just let it go and it takes a long time to settle down, uh, just keep that in mind, right? And your, your curve should reflect that. It should be really smooth looking, really nice. And then when it hits the ball here, the ball, um, not too terrible. I would move it a little bit further so it looks like it moves faster, but other than that, that's okay. The heavy ball. Let's see the heavy hammer swing. Okay, not bad. I would pull, maybe what I would do is just pull those hammers back on the initial pullback further, right? So they drop from a higher height and then come down and they'll look like they hit that a little bit more. And then just in general, speed up the swings of the hammers a little bit. Um, overall, right? Let it, allow it to, let me restate that. Allow the swing to settle in the appropriate amount of time, but we just want to shorten the keyframe from where, um, these hammers are pulled all the way back to where they swing down and hit the ball. We want that action to be faster, right? So those first two keyframes, you just have to tighten the spacing in between. But the movement on this one is not bad. I just don't see the rotation because of the material, right? So I would adjust that. And then this P um, moves down into the floor. So just make sure you make these all caps and you won't have that issue. All right. And now the dice score. Nice. Bouncy. Looks really good. Just add a third bounce into that, right? And then um, add your scene. Uh, floor lights. Are, well, the backdrop, right? the lights in there, the title, textures and materials and stuff, and you'll be all set. But good good start to this project. Good job, Nick. All right, guys. And so that is all of your guys' work for that project. If you guys get it in... um. I want that one in around by no later, no later than the 10th, right? I said that earlier, that specific one. The other ones I want in by Friday.
There's a cat in my room. And I didn't even know. I'm really sorry about that. Um, I'm not going to pick anything up that he just knocked over, but this is the life of owning a pet. <laughs> I literally cannot believe that just happened. Seamus, come here. I am going to pick him up, however, and move him out of my office. So be right back. Come here, Papa. Are you being naughty? Why? Do you want to say hi to class? You want to say hi to all the people in the class? Say hello? Say hello? Yeah, are you trying to get that? Seamus says hello to everyone. Okay, buddy, you gotta go. Thank you, Papa. There you go, little guy. He is so naughty. He's six months, so uh, he's still going through the kitten phase. <laughs> he's it's been a lot, <laughs> a lot of work. Um, he is very cute, though. He's he's exactly like those Sour Patch Kid commercials where they're they are like just sour and slightly sweet. Like he would he would cut your hair in your sleep, and then just hug you, and you'd be like, I don't know, you're so cute, I can't be mad. But then you've destroyed things. <laughs> Oh, he's such a, he's such a little rapscallion, I tell you what. Okay, so, I guess that's a, it's a transition into our next project. I don't know if it's the best, but it's a fun one, right? Sarah, are you hanging in there? I know it's, I know it takes a lot for you. I'm sorry, having to go through, like, the critiques in class can be a slow start, but I really want you guys to get those critiques because I can talk about it a little bit more than like typing all of it up for you. And so this week we are going to be, this project is not only going to teach you some new skills, right? But we're really going to be building upon all of the skills that you've learned so far. Um, we're going to be creating a butterfly animation inside of After Effects. And we're going to be using... A little bit of a different technique, we're going to be using After Effects version of 3D, um, which I'll explain a little bit more, more. But they're going to be three animated scenes, and then we're going to be combining them together to create like a coherent project. A short, short little 10 seconds, it'll be about 10 to 15 seconds uh, video. And so let's view the example here. One second this if you go into the module you will see this right here and this is Every an example winter, of what we're going to be learning butterflies on. migrate from north america to latin america monarchs use a combination of air currents and thermals to travel thousands of miles nice did that sound weird sarah on there I don't know if anything got picked up in my mic. But let's break this video down a little bit and see kind of what we're going to be doing and having an idea of how this video is going to going to go throughout this these lessons, right? Every winter. So first we have this kind of um, a very quick icon. Let me just download this actually. Can I do it? Let's refresh. All right. Download. This way I can kind of control it a little Every bit Every winter, monarch butterflies migrate nice. from North America to Latin America. And it's America. bigger for you guys to see. Monarchs use a combination of air currents and thermals to travel thousands of miles. All right, cool. Notice right away that this animation is a total of 20 seconds long, um, I believe. Let me see, yeah, 20 seconds total, I believe. So it's a very short animation, but um, we've got a few facts in there, right? The first thing you'll notice is that we have music this time. We have a voiceover um, letting us know facts specifically about monarch butterflies. Uh, this first, we have this first scene here where the butterfly is flapping its wings, right? This one, um, 
is like just an icon scene and then it um, scales up. You're going to see the whole entire composition kind of scaling up to reveal this other, the second scene where the monarch butterflies are migrating across North America um, down to the destination in Latin America. And we're seeing like a camera zooming happen, right? Like a scaling in or pushing in on pulling back. I'm sorry. It's pulling out of the scene to reveal that it's um, it starts off a nice tight shot. And then you're like, oh, wow, here's America. It's, you know, uh, it's all of North America, not just the U.S., um, we also notice that there are these lines kind of following along the animation. And so this is uh, this is a path animation, which we're going to learn to do. These are really, really popular amongst motion designers. A lot of them use path animations to convey all sorts of things like effects like wind if you want kind of an illustrated wind look or just lines across the screen there's a lot of different uses for this um, maps right if you think of this as you're watching a documentary and they show somewhere someone went from one place on a map to another and they'll use that trim paths to show the destination points in between so this is a very popular um, technique still used all the time today. And if you also notice, um, those butterflies are still flapping their wings inside the icons. So we're going to learn to do that. And then you have the transition into your third scene where you have kind of like a kaleidoscope of butterflies flying across and floating across the screen. Not only that, we have, um, we have the animated background, right? Very subtle animations. That's not the first thing that you notice. The first thing Monarch that you notice is the actual uh, butterflies going across. Travel then as you look further into the scene, you see the clouds moving, the, um, the mountain moving further towards you. So we're going to talk a little bit about that stuff. And then finally, we end off with um, credits, right? But you're obviously not going to put Casey's name in. You're not going to put my name in. This is the first time that you are going to put your own name in for the credits, right? So we that's kind of like a quick breakdown of what we're seeing in the video. Now, let me see here. It's going to be we I want you guys to go ahead and download these these assets right here. This one specifically right here is the music. Um, obviously, it's not copyrighted music, so you guys can put this on social media, um, any of your like social or portfolio sites, and it's not going to get copyrighted and stricken. So you won't have any issue with that. We've already found you a source. Then uh, this is the voiceover that Casey has provided us with the facts about the monarch butterflies that you're going to want to download. And then these are two different options for the map of North America, right? You can pick this, the PNG option, which is a little less customizable, but you can change the colors using um, a fill or a gradient ramp. You can add things. You can add effects, essentially, to this layer inside of After Effects to change the colors. Or what you can do is you can download this map of North America that's an AI file, specifically an illustrator file where you can actually go in there and customize it a little bit more keeping that in mind right customizing doesn't mean going crazy with colors or going crazy with stuff stick to a palette if you notice in this video um the palette is orange and gray you don't have to keep to that color but it's something that works well with a monarch butterfly because monarch butterflies are orange and black right so just keep in mind when you guys are doing this, I'll let you guys have a little bit more fun with the color and stuff, but just keeping in the back of your mind color theory, what looks good with orange. Um, obviously, the opposite of orange is blue, um, so that's a complementary color to it. Uh, you can work in a triad. If you guys go to that website, the coolers one that I was talking about, that one class, you can create your own color palette. Um, and then just, you know, we want kind of realistic stuff as, for that last scene, the mountain scene that we have up here. Every winter, monarch um, miles, I mean, it should be of what you would actually see in nature. Like, you don't want to have purple mountains and 
a green sky or anything like that. Like let's let's stick to realistic looking um for right now, right? And then unless you're very comfortable with color theory and you know what you're doing, um I would just kind of stick to this similar a uh, gradient background um other sunset or you could do moonlight. I would just look at references online like landscape mountainscape references and you guys can add things in here um if you need to but it has to be something that would logically be in there i don't want a baseball flying across the scene or something like that or like in the background there's the um the statue of liberty just in the middle of a beautiful mountain range um i mean kudos to the the idea but <laughs> so we broke down that. Um, we'll be taking these, we'll be working with audio first, right? We want to set the audio up inside of After Effects because After Effects, unfortunately, doesn't handle audio very well. What happens when you first put it in there and you bring it into your composition, it'll play back just fine. But as soon as you start adding layers in there that have movement and motion and visuals after effects will prioritize the visuals and the motion before it prioritizes the audio and so what does that mean is you start to lose audio um just uh, like the the quality of the audio goes down and it slows it down r really slow and it'll sound all weird and and robotic and crazy and so if you get the audio nailed down first in there then um you'll just kind of know where you have to work like where where the amount of time that you're working at with as far as how long your scenes have to be so um here are some like uh tips and stuff about the skills that we're going to be talking about and using the sound different um different shortcuts that we'll be using throughout this I am not going to show you guys. I'm going to go over a little bit about the drawing of the butterfly and illustrating the background, um, but I'm not going to do that for the sake of time. With that being said, there are videos in here where Casey walks you through using Illustrator to draw a butterfly and then also creating the background uh, for the butterfly. This one's going to be a little bit different, right? I'm going to kind of give you the guidelines on how to animate things. And then you're going to have to use the knowledge that you have. Uh, and then you're going to have to apply it to the entire video. So let's get started here and bring up After Effects. And then Sarah, I just see that you're having still an issue with the audio and after effects like what what's happening specifically uh i'm going to shut my camera off here so you guys can see the entire program and um i have already set up a after effects project here i went inside of my folder i have set up for the three scene animation. And then I've already downloaded everything. But let's go over some file organization stuff right now before we move into getting, like before we move into After Effects. So I'm gonna delete the submissions because that is not relevant to this. I have, um, if we look in here, I have an After Effects file, a couple of Illustrator files, some audio files here, right? And it's all, it's all there, but it's not, it's not cleaned up. And we really want to make sure that we are as organized as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a folder in here and I'm going to name it AE for After Effects. And I'm going to take this After Effects project and drop it into here. This is the little autosave file that goes along with it. You're going to want to make sure that if you create your, if you create the project file first, that you want to make sure you say you move that um, additional file along with the project file to any folder that you move it to, right? And then uh, the next thing I'm going to create is a new folder and label it audio because I'm going to drop in the music. Whoop, wrong. Drop it 
the song into there and then I'm also going to drop in that voiceover. And then the last thing I'm going to do is create another folder labeled assets. And then I'm going to take these two images and I'm going to drop them in there as well. This way when you go and you're opening up a project you're like, oh, I can easily identify and look for whatever I need, right? In case you have to share something or pull something out quickly or add something to these folders, it just keeps it nice and clean. The other folder, the last folder I'm going to add here is a render folder so that you can just save your renders to that file specifically. And that way, everything related to this project is, is nicely organized inside of this main folder. Uh... Let's close that out and open After Effects then. Audio won't play, and then when I try to mess with it, all After Effects crashes. That's really weird. Um, what you might want to do, Sarah, is do you know how to uninstall projects on, or like uninstall applications on your computer? Sometimes during downloads of applications things can go wrong or there might have been some kind of weird bug that's happening on the back end and then the coding of the software and how it works um so that might be the first option yeah okay good you do know how to do that. So that might be the first option I would do is uninstall After Effects and then reinstall it. Actually I can show you guys you can do it within the Adobe Suite Manager app. So when you download After Effects, or when you download Adobe, you automatically get this, this app, right? That's the Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app. It will look like this on your desktop, specifically that, that one right there. And so what you can do is you can come down to After Effects this way, and this, and if you do it this this way it will fully like uninstall everything, all of the files and stuff. And you'll just click uninstall. Then when you're ready to reinstall it, you'll just come back here again and you will reinstall it. Um, so try that first. And then if that doesn't work, Sarah, let me know either in Slack or you can um, like maybe take a screen recording of what's happening if it still continues after that. And maybe we'll be able to troubleshoot that because that you definitely want to be able to work with the audio and if not um i will go over with you a different way to add audio into your into your videos it will just be in a different program which i could teach the rest of you as well but let's see if this works first perfect thank you sarah all right so moving forward on the note Uh, nope, that's not what I wanted. Here we go. So the basic, over the overall reason that we're doing, a big part of this project is going to be like animating along a path, right? We already, I already showed you the path animations. I let you know how, how, um, how utilized they are within the motion graphics and animation community. Um, so we're going to, basically be drawing a path and moving an object along that path. It's slightly different from what we've been doing in the beginning and in past videos by animating using position keyframes. Um, this is a slightly different way to do a, a long, like a, a very complex shape. And so the first thing I'm going to do is add some folders in here. I'm going to underscore comps, right? Because we're going to have multiple compositions within this project. So I want to make sure I have a group for those. I want to add one in for assets, like images, um, image files and stuff. And then I want to add one in for audio. And then I'm going to select that folder and I'm going to control I, control or command I. And I'm going to navigate over to where I have everything saved. I was adding the audio right now. I Whatever folder that you have selected in your project panel, if you hit control I, that's where it's going to put it. That's where you're going to import your objects or your assets to, right? So I'm going to do this and hit import. And then I'm going to close that down and then I'm going to select the assets folder, hit control I, 
and then go back and add these assets in. I think I can do that like that. Let me see. Make sure when you are importing these uh, Illustrator files or if you're importing Photoshop files to make sure that you're not importing them as footage. You want to import them as a composition retain layer sizes. Let's import that now. So we might have to change the shape of things, but like as far as the compositions, like this composition is obviously not 1920 by 1080, but um, we'll scale things down, right? And then the monarch butterfly is also not 1920 by 1080. I create this is in a a square um, composition, so we'll address that when we get to it. When you, whenever you import um, Adobe files into After Effects, it will create like an additional comp. Um, it's okay to have that in there. I would leave it in this assets folder for now. And then if we need to rearrange it and change some things, we will. But let's create a new comp. And this one we will name main. I put the underscore in front. Remember to uh, bring this, this layer in my project panel up to the top. So that's because this is going to be the one I'm going to access the most. 1920 by 1080, 24 frames a second. Uh, let's do 20 seconds and hit OK. And so let's bring in, let's drag the audio files onto the timeline first and talk about the audio. So I'm going to drag and drop. It looks like this is the this is the music at the top. I'm gonna bring that one below the the voice over here. The music's gonna continue off screen. Like if I take this, notice if I if I take this file, this layer, and I start to drag it this way. Let me see here. Click. If I take this layer, grab it and and push it that way, you'll see the end of the audio, the end of the song, or the beginning of the track. Right, And then um, if I move it this way, the opposite direction, you'll notice that I can continue moving it and continue moving it because the length of the song is quite a bit longer than our actual composition. There's nothing wrong with that. Just know that that's the reason this is longer than the voiceover track. So I'm just going to delete that and then bring it back in here so that it is at the beginning of the track. Now... In order to view a waveform of the audio inside of After Effects, you're going to want to go inside of the composition and you click on the layer and then you hit LL, but quickly, LL. <laughs> Let me type that in there for you. If you're not fast enough, it will only do it once, but you just type LL. And that will bring up the levels for you to actually visually see what is happening on the audio. So if I mute this the song right now every winter monarch butterflies migrate from north america to latin america nice it sounds really good right now um you can see the space in between when he says things if i zoom in really tight here you can see that there's uh, a little bit of room noise in there that's okay because he recorded this in a room that was pretty silent so you don't have to do anything there but you can see how when he's talking you can visually see these waveforms um, and you can almost pick out specific parts in audio just visually based off the waveforms right like um, for example inside of when you're editing video they have the slate right right we spoke about that in the beginning of the semester where they slam it down and they're like action and what you do is normally the video and the audio are captured separately. So you're not using audio from a camera. You're using audio from microphones and, a, and like a machine that in, takes that, that audio. And so you have to line that up inside of a program. Well, what you do is when that slate slams down, 
you line up the the pop in the audio what it'll look like on the waveform is this really straight line up where there's like a clear clipping pop that happens right the the waveform goes very quickly very short and it's obvious there's something that hits right there right and so that's just ways to visually see certain things within a waveform now when you want to see well let me explain it like this loudness in side of loudness in general is measured by decibels so what is that decibels d-e-c-i-b-e-l-s in after effects you will see it written as db any in inside of an audio file if you bring down the the menu um, it will say db next to it and that is the decibels that is your essentially your volume button right now the audio that's playing right now for his voiceover is fine um as far as loudness goes the levels start at if i select this layer again and i hit l once you notice that it brings up the decibel the audio levels the volume here you never go never go above oh my goodness above zero ever 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 um, unless for some reason there's very few exceptions and the exception is if the audio was not captured properly right um, this is like your base this is the loudest that it can get so you don't want to go above even though you can go above and you can increase that volume you don't ever really want to because this you have to consider everything that other people are going to be viewing the video on right what does that mean um people might watch your video on a cell phone they might watch your video on a tablet they might watch it on a computer sometimes they might watch it on a television all of those different devices have different audio like the ways that they process audio and the loudness that happens and so you don't want someone to play your video and the audio be so loud that they they have to stop it right away um that's you know that will obviously people won't watch your video at that point if it's way too loud and so you just want to make sure that when you're playing that audio Every let me winter, see if i get the audio dirt. preview monarch butterflies migrate from North America to Latin America. If you, oh, you could hear it kind of drop down there in pitch. Um, but if you look at this area right here, right, your audio should be in the green. Uh, I would not go really, you don't want when it's playing, you don't want it to go really above this, right? Because that means it's way too loud. And so when I play this, you can see that it stays comfortably within that green zone. Every winter. Monarch butterflies migrate from North America to Latin America. There's a couple spots where maybe it just pops up real quick, but in general, this is like a safe audio level, especially for this voiceover. Now, when you're adding music um, along with a voiceover, it is important to make sure that the voiceover stands out, right? Um, when we add text on screen, we want obviously want the viewer to be able to read what's on the screen, right? Well, if we're adding a voiceover in where someone's reading something or narrating something, we don't want the music to be louder than that narration. We obviously want to hear what they're saying. And so you have to make sure that you turn your the the decibels in the in your audio like the music down specifically. Now, um, like I said earlier, you don't ever want to go above. So we're going to go into the negatives, right? That's turning the audio down. A good rule of thumb, negative three dB equals one notch. What does that mean? It's like turning down. It's like when they say turn it down a notch, that is, um, turning it down by negative three decibels is a, a good reason right or a good um gauge of turning it down a notch 
So let's say we want the audio to, let's show the audio waveforms real quick. And then you guys can see what happens when I do change that, the um, decibels down when I turn it down a little bit. There we go. So we can see visually that the waveforms are almost equal. Like obviously this song isn't um, as loud, right? The vertical, the waves, the vertical height of these waves is the loudness of them. Uh, and it's, a, it's about the same. The levels are both at zero decibels starting off. It's always the default. Um, and so let's turn this one down. We're going to hit um, L on the keyboard again. And then let's turn it down two notches. So would be, what would that be? Three and three is six, right? So that is two, that's equivalent to two notches. Now, if I hit LL and pull back up the waveform, I mean, it's kind of different, um, not much, which means we could probably turn it down more. And so I'm going to hit L again. I'm going to bring this back up to zero so you guys can audibly hear what it sounds like together. Butterflies migrate from North America to Latin America. Monarchs use a combination of air currents and thermals to travel thousands of miles. Especially right at the end section where you're going to have your credits and that um, you can see it all of a sudden getting louder here, right? More instruments are being used. This is the very subtle introductory part of the audio. Well, um, that's okay. It still sounds like it's competing with the voiceover and we definitely don't want that. So let's um, turn that down four notches. Let's double that, right? So let's go to the levels, go to negative 12, and hit LL, and look at it now. The waveform seems to be visually staying the same, but the audio should be different. There we go, it looks a lot smaller here, right? At the beginning of the, the song. In fact, if you wanna line this up, because right here, nothing's happening, the song hasn't started yet, so you can just drag that um, end of the layer over and then move this over slightly and that way the audio will start right when the video starts. Every winter monarch butterflies migrate from North America to Latin America. Monarchs use a combination of air currents and thermals to travel thousands of miles. Not bad. That's that's pretty good. Um, I'll accept anything really between negative 9 and negative 12 dBs, which means 3 to 4 notches, right? I'm going to save that. The other thing that you notice is you can visually think of where these scenes are going to go, right? And time out your video almost based on the visual waveform of the audio. So this is the introductory part where the icon section happens. Air currents and thermals. Oh, not that part. Go all the way to the front. I'm zoomed in quite a bit. Here we go. Every winter, monarch butterflies migrate from North America. Every winter, right? That's where the monarch butterfly is introduced on screen in the in the circle shape. And then right here is where the transition is going to happen and it's going to go to the next scene where it talks about monarch the migrating. Butterflies right? migrate from North America to Latin Just, America. And that's your second scene. So you can visually pick out your scenes. This is going to be your third scene right here, this entire section. And then after this, you're going to have for the remainder of the anywhere between 18 and 20 seconds, right? You can cut it a little short here, but this section will be the credits. And so, let me, let me just save this real quick. And I just kind of want to give you guys some pointers about editing audio. Um, what you're listening on makes a big difference. What does that mean? Some people are listening on headphones um, based on the devices, right? What we were talking about is the devices. Um, and you, so you wanna be extra careful and just remember that. That's the biggest thing when it comes to audios. You wanna think about where are people gonna view this video? What are they gonna be watching it on? Nowadays, people watch videos mostly on their phone, but they do watch it um, on their computers as well equally, right? So. Um, 
Keep that in the back of your mind when you're editing this. If it's too loud for you, it's too loud for other people. Another tip I have um, is to turn down the music an extra notch just because of this, right? And I did that because I was going to put it at negative 9, but I put it down to negative 12 because that's that one extra notch that gives you a little bit of breathing room. Let me write these down here. So my little list is this. Remember what, or let's see here. Be conscious of what the audience will be watching your videos on. Um, and I'll just put in quotes, devices, right? So you guys can keep in mind what devices they might be using. Because of this, turn the dBs down an extra notch. Um, work with your system volume of your computer at 50%. Why do I say this? Because if you're working where your volume is at 100%, you're hearing it at the max that it, your computer is going to be pumping it out to you. But some people might not be, most people usually listen around 50% um, between, in my opinion, usually I listen anywhere between 30 and 50% on my speakers, right? Um, when you're working at 50%, it's kind of like the a volume on your computer, right? The little, you don't see it on this because this is my second screen, but the tiny little volume thing here, just make sure it's turned at 50%. And that way you know that you're not either blowing out the speakers and you're not making it too quiet, right? You're not turning it down too much where you're hearing it and it's very quiet at 100%, but then if you were to drop your computer down to 50%, you're not going to be able to hear it at all, right? So just make sure... This is, um, this is a good one. Make sure you're working at 50% volume on your system. The other thing um, to mention is that when working with a voiceover, which is short, VO is short for voiceover, um, I suggest to wear headphones. The reason I suggest wearing headphones when working with dialogue um, is because it allows you to hear and remove things that you might not necessarily catch while listening over speakers. What, what kind of things am I talking about? Like pops, you're going to hear like a lot of those noises. Um, just essentially mouth noises that you're going to hear. Um, big breaths, you'll hear people breathe in before they go to speak in say something long. Um, let me think. Those lip smacks of voice, just any kind of noises that you make with your mouth, you're going to hear better over headphones. Um, I really suggest getting over the ear headphones if possible. There's some that I would definitely recommend more than others. Um, and this is for the future, right? Right now, you guys, we're not going to be working with a ton of audio but um, this is for something you guys want to keep in mind for moving forward in your career is you will need to get a good set of he uh, audios, I'm sorry, a good set of headphones specifically made for editing like video or audio. Um, they make headphones that have kind of like a neutral sound to it where the bass isn't cranked up, you don't have cranked up treble, you don't have um, different levels that are adjusted so that you're hearing it the way it actually sounds, right? You want to hear it at a normal level and that way you're going to be able to adjust things as needed manually. Uh, super exciting because I've worked with tons of, oh, that's great. That's great to know, Sarah. So you'll have a little bit of, um, experience under your belt with this and that's, that's awesome. Like if you guys have that experience, that that puts you that gives you like a leg up looking for a job later is that you have um have a decent amount of work with audio. Um the other thing I would say is you're if you're listening to overall um the video overall especially at the end after you render it out, you should take your headphones off and listen to it over more than one device. Um here, let me see. 
listen to the, the final video on more than one device. Play it on your cell phone. Play it on your computer. Play it on a tablet. I don't care where you play it. Just play it over more than one um, electronic device. And that way you can get a better sense on how it's going to sound. Make sure your volume is at that 50%. And then play it over speakers, right? Because most people um, that work day to day in a non-creative, non-audio-based like audio -based job are not going to have headphones on. They're going to be listening through a speaker. And so you want to just make sure that everything sounds balanced at the end of your video by listening to it over speakers on more than one device, right? Whether it's your speakers on your phone, the speakers, um, the peripheral speakers that are attached to your computer, uh, or over, you know, like if you have a sound bar attached to your television, you listen to it that way, you know, and that way you'll get a gauge, oh gosh, it sounds so much lo louder on my cell phone or on my computer. And then you can go in and adjust the audio. Um, Sarah, what'd you say? My friends and I do voice impressions. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's so cool that you like, that you sing and do covers. It really is crazy The you don't think that that's not something that crosses your mind when you're creating videos. And then what will happen is later on down the road, you'll have this and, and it happened to me in a video that I wish the audio I could rip the audio out at this point, but I can't because I don't have the working files. But, um, you know, when I was working with it. I wasn't working within those parameters and I rendered it out and sent it in and I listened to it and it was so loud. It was unbearably loud and you couldn't hear the voiceover very well. And it just kind of made the video overall hard to watch. And I don't want you guys to deal with that. And like, you're like, oh gosh, I wish I would have done something different then. So I'm letting you know these tips and tricks now so that you have this idea moving forward um, for when you start to work with more, more audio, right? So let's move forward. The audio is all set in here for us. Um, I'm going to furl that back up, and I'm actually going to lock these so I can't move them around. And then let's talk kind of about drawing your butterfly assets inside of Illustrator. Um, there was this one, this video right here that you guys are going to want to watch Casey use. Um, I'm not quite sure. I haven't watched the entire thing, but he, I don't think he's going to create both wings separately. In fact, you don't want to, right? It's a, a butterfly is a symmetrical animal. And so really all you have to do is create the body, create the wing, one wing, and then reflect that wing. Right? So if I were to open my, here, I can do it inside of After Effects since we're already in here. I'm going to take my assets and open that butterfly, the monarch layer. And notice that I have everything separated out. The first and the second wing, the body, the antenna one and antenna two, right? And so that way when I grab these, and move them around they're all separated but you notice that this and this exactly the same so you just make one and then just reflect it um, and f you essentially copy paste and then reflect it to this side so I would definitely watch that you'll want to create your own butterfly in your own style if you want and then the butterfly though should be it should be orange um, because that's the color that monarchs are and if someone's watching that and they're like, that's not the color of a monarch. Then <laughs> They're going to point that out right away. And they're going to focus on that through the video. So uh, make sure your project sizes match. If you want to illustrate, you can illustrate this butterfly in your background scene. And whatever program you feel more comfortable in. When it comes to F or Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, when it comes to Photoshop. You are easy. You can just obviously drag and drop the files into here, right? You don't have to export the imagery out. You can just work off of the file directly because it has dynamic linking through all of the Adobe products. 
And that just means that any product that is under the Adobe umbrella can talk to each other back and forth. The nice thing about this is if I went into Illustrator and made a change to my butterfly, it will update that change once I save it to my After Effects file. So I can just show you guys what that looks like real quick. If I go into here and I open this up. It's trying to open it. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Just takes a while. All right, I'm gonna move this over here. Let's say I take the body of the butterfly and he is on some fun things. He's at an EDM concert and he is trying to show off to the ladies. So he's purple and then I save it, control S, and then all of a sudden that, that updates here. So that's the power of working within the Adobe products. Let's change that back because obviously he's not gonna be purple. <laughs> My butterfly is an old man and he likes to stay at home. <laughs> Except for migrating season because obviously that's what we're going to have him do. But um, that's the power of working within the Adobe suite. But you can use, um, if you want to add like textures and stuff, you can use Procreate. That's fine. You can use Photoshop if you want. That's fine. Um, you can use another vector program if you want. That's cool. The thing is, if you are working in a pixel-based program like Procreate or Photoshop, you need to make sure that you're working at the appropriate project size. So make sure that it matches the, the compositions that you're going to be sending out. 1920 by 1080, right? Especially if you're working in those pixel-based programs. Because what's going to happen is you're going to try and scale something up and it's going to look fuzzy and you don't want that. So honestly, it's best working higher in a higher resolution and then just kind of scaling it down. Um, but if, as long as you're drawing it in 1920 by 1080 and, and mostly filling up the frame of that with your object, then you should be fine. Also something to note, if you are working in a project outside of any Adobe suite, if you're working outside of an Adobe Suite software, like Procreate, for example, you need to export your layers out as PNGs with alpha channels. So, um, because you're going to export your wings out separately, you're going to export your body out separately, they're going to all be separate PNGs. Remember that. And then you'll just um, import them into your assets folder inside of your project panel. Um if you're, you know, if you're working in Photoshop or Illustrator, you can just drag and drag the actual working files into here. Um, you're going to be creating three different objects. You're going to create the butterfly like this. And then you're, the scene two is going to be, we'll still use the same butterfly. We'll just arrange him a little bit differently. And then um, you'll have the map, which I provided you. Also, for the third scene, you're going to want to illustrate the, the mountains, right? You're going to have a gradient sky. You're going to have the mountains added in there, clouds, and anything else that fits within that scene. Um, and so what I want you guys to do is just kind of, I'm going to not get into the animation part today. Um, I'm going to cut the class off a few minutes short here. But this is where I kind of want you guys to get started is with the illustration section. You guys will want to use a reference for the butterfly. So if you just Google um, monarch butterfly and you find an image, you're going to want to find one where the wings are spread out like this, right? Um, kind of like a full open wing versus something that is closed off. This is an illustration, but this, I mean, this is a good example of what you don't want your wing shapes to really look like. You want them to kind of be like this or like this. And just make sure that when you're illustrating it, you're illustrating it in the view from the top down as if the wings were spread out. Because we will pull this apart and we will rearrange it so that it looks more like this. Um, and so make sure that you start off with a nice reference where it looks good. You're going to draw the one wing. Um, you'll draw the body and you'll draw the antennas and then you'll duplicate that wing and mirror it, right? So go ahead and get started with all of that. 
And um, on Thursday's class, we're going to start animating it. We're going to go over your participation questions, so make sure you guys get those in. And we should have a lot of fun um, animating this because working with animating paths... I'm going to bring my camera back up. Um, these techniques that you're going to use in here are going to be something that you're going to consistently use. If you're working with an After Effects as an animator or motion graphics designer, these techniques are going to be something that you carry along throughout your, your career and you're going to use multiple times. It's going to get so repetitive, you're probably not going to want to use it. But there's just so many options with how it works and what you can make make using trim paths or path animations um, that it's just it's just a fun thing to learn and this is going to be uh it's like a mini it's like your biggest mini project so far because it's just a lot of different aspects we have the audio adding in um, you're creating your own imagery and now i want you guys to have fun with this one to fade out the Okay, yeah, this is about fading out the audio levels. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But this project is the project that you guys can submit um, for the Artist of Promise, but you don't want to make it look exactly like the, the reference one, right? You want to maybe put, um, have a little bit more fun with this scene, make it look a little different than um, what is in there, and maybe make the United States look a little bit different. You could add some... Water as a background there, right? You can just have a little bit more creative freedom in these ones. Just keeping in mind the design, your design theories and stuff. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good night tonight and get started on these illustrations so that on Thursday, if you guys are in class, you guys can follow along with me and animate at the same time. But I hope you guys have a good night. Sarah, I hope you have a good night. The Theo stuff is super fun and silly. I have to show you sometime. Yeah, you can go ahead and, um, if you have it on Instagram, you said you have it on Instagram, right? You can follow my Instagram um, channel and then I'll follow you back. Just send me a message. My channel is... Let me do this. Media. So if you just look up Makara Media, um, you can send me your profile or whatever and I can listen to that. Take a listen to those because I enjoy seeing what you guys do on your free time. A lot of you guys are great illustrators um, and it's a little uncomfortable moving into working inside. I get like it's not the same, right? The illustrations and stuff, but you can essentially make those illustrations that you guys do pull apart whatever you're going to animate, put those on separate layers or illustrate those on separate layers to begin with and then animate those inside of After Effects or inside of Animate or inside of um, like Cinema 4D eventually, right? But, you know, you guys have a lot of really good... There's a lot of good illustrators in this class, so I want to see some cool stuff in there, you know? It doesn't necessarily have to be... If, if it's a specific style, if you guys are going to change the style, right, this style right here that we were showing is a very, it's like iconography style, very simple vector style icons or illustrations. You guys can add a little bit more into that, but just uh, make sure that it's consistent throughout the video, right? You just will have to make everything essentially custom, so... Um, but yeah, have a good night, guys, and I will talk to you on Thursday. Questions, if you have them, just reach out.